Do you want to know how I'm a full-time entrepreneur and I still read multiple books every single month? In today's video, I'm going to tell you how. What's up guys, welcome back to The Bookworm, where I talk to you about meaningful takeaways from the books that I've read, the importance of reading, and also some of my reading hacks and tips. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, one of my reading tips, which is how do I just be more consistent in my reading? Like, how are you coming up with this time, man? Like, I have all these things going on. I have a job and kids and responsibilities and bills, and I'd love to read. Maybe when I'm on vacation one day, right? And so it's not a thing, but the, the problem is it's been cited consistently time and again as specialized knowledge acquisition is one of the number one growth hacks for the ultra successful and for the ultra wealthy. So we know they're there because of the reading, not because they're there so now they have time to read. So we've gotta be able to connect and kind of figure out how we can implement that in our lives and take advantage of this tremendous opportunity. So that's what we're gonna do. And also, if you if you wanna know, I didn't always read. I very much struggled all the way through school. I read what I had to, and being ADD, as ADD as I am, it's a very, very challenging thing for me. So if this plan can work for me, I promise it can work for you too. All right, so the first on my slide that I've got to discuss with you guys is to first, what I do is I'll take any given book, well, let's just take Darren Hardy's book, and I'll see how many pages it is, right? The core content, I'll see how many pages it is. So this book's actually pretty short. It's only 158 pages. Now. What I then do is I figure out, okay, what's going on in my life right now, right? Uh, I've got a, a big initiative, I've got a big presentation, or I'm gonna be traveling or, or whatever, right? I figure out like, what does what are my next few weeks look like, right? Is this gonna be a busy month, or not a busy month? So that I can make a reading plan for myself. I think sometimes we just grab a book and there's no plan. We just say, well, I'll read it, right? And that's part of the problem. So you wanna pick a definitive date based upon the amount of pages in that book. So 158 pages, I know I can knock that out in about even being as busy as I am and reading very slowly, right? Not not slowly in terms of how fast I read, but just slowly finishing the book. I can still read that book in about two weeks, realistically. Now, here's what I do, and this is gonna make it sound a little bit more di digestible for you. So I pull out my handy dandy calculator, which I highly recommend you do. So let's say it's 158 pages. So let's divide it by 15. That's 10 and a half pages a day. That's not a big deal, guys. It's not a big deal at all, right? So here's the deal. When we, when we think about things, it's, it's that whole adage of how do you eat an elephant? When you look at the elephant, it's this big, massive thing. And it's like, yeah, that would take a while. When it looks like it's 200, 250, 300 pages, it feels massive. But if you're gonna do it over the course of a month, roughly six to 10 pages a day. That to me is a lot more doable, a lot more manageable. And here's the deal, and I'm gonna talk to you about this in a second, but you can also be strategic and jump out ahead because a lot of people are like, I can easily do 10, great. But let's break it down into two windows of six to 10 pages per sitting. And that's gonna help you in a lot of different areas. I'm gonna talk to you more about that in a minute. Okay, so next is we're going to pick a spot and the times that you plan to read, all right? So for me, it's just pretty simple. Uh, and I've played with different areas and places and times and stuff like that. And this is just what works best for me. So please do what works best for you. But the number one place for me is right when I wake up, I'm eating breakfast, I'm getting ready for the gym, and I just sit there and I knock my six to 10 pages out right then and there. Because here's the deal, we wake up and what's the first thing we do? We get on social media and we're scrolling and it's just dopamine, dopamine, dopamine hit. And that's not the best way to enter into your day. So I like to kind of read and let it marinate on my mind while I'm working out at the gym and kind of meditating on that. And the reason being is that part of the benefit of only reading and doing sittings of ten, six to 10 pages at a time, not to say that's all you're gonna read all day, but the big benefit of that is, is here's the deal. Let's say I tell you three words, right? Three three lists on, on an ing uh, ingredients for an item. I say, well, it's macaroni and cheese. So you need noodles, you need dairy, you know, some form of butter and cheese. I know there's more to it than that, but let's just say it's noodles, uh, uh, it's butter and it's cheese. You're gonna remember that all day long because I only gave you three ingredients. Now, let's say I pull up something that the ingredients are 27 items long. You're not going to remember that, right? And so I think the problem is, is that we sit down and we try to read 50, 60 pages at a time. And then the problem is, is that sure, you ticked your box. You read all 60 pages, but are you really going to remember all that? Are you really going to take it with you, right? And so what I like to do is this. I like to have shorter sessions. We know this now about the human brain. The human brain is better at sprints, not marathons. It's better at really short you know, this is why Pomodoros have become, and batching has become so popular. Because if we can go in little sprints of 60 to 90 minute windows and take breaks, our brain just works a lot better. 
The problem is when we're thinking about reading, that's not the way we try to do it. We try to think we're going to sit down and block out six hours. So the issue is, is that you're not retaining, you're reading and it's this laborious activity. It doesn't feel fun. And you're like, I have way too many things to do, but everybody has 10 minutes at breakfast. Everybody has that, right? And if you don't, and that's not your situation, then maybe there's another time, right? Maybe you, when you send your kids off to school and on the way home, you listen to an audio book, right? So whatever time that is, let's just make it more digestible, right? Let's make it more of a small sprint versus a long marathon. So for me, I eat I try to eat at least two of my three meals every single day. I take the book that I'm reading at that specific time. You can do the math. If the, if the book's only 158 pages and I can knock out breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 30 pages right then and there, let me finish with that book in five days. So I will knock that thing out. And you're like, wow, he's a speed reader. No, I just made it digestible and I had a plan, right? So fundamentally, I think one of the most important things you can do is just make it, break it down. All right, next is take your book with you. All right, so again, this is a benefit of audiobooks and Kindles because they're always with you because it's likely you always have this thing with you, right? Your 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 d digital devices, right? Your phone or whatever, right? So Audible, uh, Kindle, those things that you can just have with you at all times. I like physical copies of books. And the reason being is another little tip I'm going to give you guys, which is I like to highlight things. So I run a book club called the VIP Book Club, and I need to be able to refer back to things. So with an audiobook, I can't do that. So if I'm making lectures and things like that for my students, it's just impossible for me to go back. So, so I need actual physical copies. So another little tip that I've got, kind of like a sub tip here, is to highlight things when you're reading, right? That's going to help you retain and memorize things and, and kind of also be thinking about meditating on like how this actually applies to you and your life or your business or whatever it looks like for you. But what I do, though, is I try to take my book everywhere I'm going. If you're going to be on the plane or... You're going to be sitting somewhere, right? Like you're going to be at a weight, like you're going to, I don't know, you're getting a prescription filled, right? Have your book with you. There's your 10, 15 minutes right there. So we need to just take advantage of the time that we have. I'm not asking you to multitask, but how many times do you sit around? Be honest, because I do it too, but how many times do we sit around and guess what the first thing we do is? We're playing, we're just endless scrolling on Facebook. The average person, average adult, this is going to scare you. The average adult has been found to waste two hours of their workday every single day. So a nine-hour workday, we're wasting two, and that's a you know eight to nine. We're already wasting two hours right there, right? So, and I would go so far as to say there's also some of that that bleeds into our personal lives too. So what can you do to capitalize on the moments that you do have? And maybe some digital detox is actually going to help you kind of not overstimulate your brain anyways, right? Just get off of your devices for a little while. So I, I think those are re really, really important tips. And it's how I take advantage of knowing that I'm going to have some extra time built in and to maximize that time. Okay, so the next thing is, and this is a life changer. This is honestly, this is a game changer. This is a lifesaver for me. I have these Bose uh, 700s and I just pop these on. I can't even hear myself talk, right? So... I would get some kind of noise canceling headphones. And the reason being is that oftentimes the problem is, is that we're trying to read and maybe you do have kids or maybe you are trying to read while you're waiting for a prescription to be filled or maybe you, you know, you're, you're whatever, listening to an audiobook. Now, be careful about your laws and stuff like that. Maybe it's you, you want to wear regular headphones, not noise canceling when you're driving. But my point is, is that I'm just more dialed in when I don't hear all this other noise. It's hard enough for me to focus. So I try to pick something. There's a couple really, really, I'm going to drop them in the comments or the, the description below. Um, there's a couple stations that I like on Spotify that are more like instrumental beat type music, lo-fi beats, stuff like that, where there's not words in the music and the songs. Because if I hear the words and it's competing in my brain for that as well, that's a really tough thing for me to be able to do. Uh, another thing that I really like to do, a little bonus pro tip here, is I like to try to meditate before if I if I can. Now, the breakfast one, no, because I just wake up and go straight into my reading. But sometimes if I'm going to have like a lunch session or whatever, I try to make meditation an active part of my day. The reason being is that we have all these things that are pulling us in all these different directions and we have way too much beta brainwave state, which is an active brainwave state. And that's not really conducive to learning. That's not conducive to being in a flow state, right? And so what I try to do is make sure that I'm, I am just as much as I'm active and things are pulling me to be active, I'm also counterbalancing that with some more theta, lower brainwave states, calming. I think we, we underestimate how important that really is for our focus and concentration. So those are some things that I do, and those noise-canceling headphones help me achieve that. 
if you do 10 to 15 minutes of meditation with these noise canceling headphones on and you're listening to something that's more of an instrumental type, even classical music has been proven to help people a lot. I think you're reading, you're going to find that you're retaining so much more than what you would otherwise. Okay. And then my last tip for you guys is to just stay consistent. I think one of the harder things for people, and this goes back to my, my first point, which is not having a plan. So what happens is, is I think you start out and you grab the compound effects by Darren Hardy and you say, it's only 150 pages and you read the first 25, right? And some statistic was pulled up and I don't recall exactly what it was, but it was over 80% of people don't read beyond the first chapter or like the first few chapters. I think it was the first 20 pages if I'm being accurate here. So I think the problem is, is that we're well-intentioned, but we don't have a plan. And then we try to come back to the book and it feels like, you know, two months later, I have to restart. Or even a week later, I feel like I have to restart because I, I, I forgot a lot of what I read already, right? And so there's this huge gap. And you, you spend the first five pages reading like, oh, yeah, I remember how this kind of connects. And, this, you know, so here's what I would do. Uh, I would pick a book, have a plan, and then stay consistent. And I read pretty much six days a week. Seven, I don't read on Saturdays usually. I kind of use that as a day of rest. But six days a week, I read. And oftentimes what I'll do is if I want to take a break, then I'll plan a buffer between finishing The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, and I'll give myself like six days to just not read, right? I finish this in a week, and I give myself a few days to just kind of, okay, you know, now I'm ready to kind of take a break. Or again, planning around your schedule, right? But I think being consistent is huge. It's really frustrating to just be picking up and putting back down and stuff like that. So if you have a plan and you stick with it, we know that 66 days is what it requires on average to build new habits, right? So if you can just, that's a little bit over two months, guys. If you can just stick with it, reading every single day, picking your spot, reading in that spot every day, wearing your noise canceling headphones, taking your book with you, all of these things we've talked about. I think if you can stick with that foundationally for just 66 days, what you'll find is it's just something you do. You don't have to think about it anymore. You just go into autopilot. So I think we have to understand the benefit of success habits. You know, willpower, discipline, these things are great, but they all should be aimed at building habits. Success habits are why people are successful, not because they just possess any more strength or willpower than what you have, right? And that was liberating for me to know that. It's building success, success habits. And reading for me is at the top of that list for success habits. So I hope this video helped you. I hope you got a lot out of it. I hope your reading is gonna be so much easier now and maybe it's going to take you a few weeks to kind of figure out what works for you that's fine be patient stick with it make sure you guys like and subscribe uh, to the channel and comment below tell me what's your favorite reading hack what did i miss right are there are things that help you that could also help me i'd love to hear your thoughts as well and also don't forget to check out my vip book club specifically for small business owners and entrepreneurs all right guys take care i'll see you in the next one